Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 79, Text 30. Tam punar naimisham praptam rishayo ayajayan muda kritvangam kratubhi sarvair nivrittakila Vigraham Tampunar Naimisham Praptam Rishayo Yajayan Muda Kratvangam Kratubhi Sarvair Nivrita Kila Vigraham Go ahead. Tampunar naimisham praptam Rishayo yajayan muda Kratvangam kratubhi sarvair Nivritta kilat vigraham Tampunar nimisham praptam Rishayo Yajayan Muda Kritvangam Kratubhi Sarvair Nivritta Kila Vigraham Tampunar Naimisham Praptam Rishayo Yajayan Muda Kritvangam Kratubhi Sarvair Nivrita Kila Vigraham Tampunar Naimisham Praptam Visayo Yajayan Muda Kritvangam Kratubhi Sarvair Ladies, oh, oh, ladies, Nivrita Kila Vigraham Tam Him Lord Balaram Punaha Again Naimisham At Naimisharanya Praptam Arrived Rishayaha The Sages Ayajayan Engaged in performing Vedic sacrifices Muda with pleasure. Kratu of all sacrifices. Angam the embodiment. Kratubhi with ritualistic performances. Sarvaihi all varieties. Nivritta who had renounced. Akila all. Vigraham warfare. Later, Lord Balaram returned to Naimisharanya, where the sages joyfully engaged him, the embodiment of all sacrifice, in performing various kinds of Vedic sacrifice. Lord Balaram was now retired from, war from warfare. 
purport. Srila Prabhupada writes, when Lord Balaram went to the holy place of pilgrimage at Naimisharanya, the sages, saintly persons, and Brahmins all stood up to receive him. They understood that Lord Balaram, although a Kshatriya, was now retired from the fighting business. The Brahmanas and the sages, who were always for peace and tranquility, were very pleased at this. All of them embraced Balaram with great affection and induced him to perform various kinds of sacrifices in that sacred spot of Naimisharanya. Actually, Lord Balaram had no business performing the sacrifices recommended for ordinary human beings. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore he himself is the enjoyer of all such sacrifices. As such, his exemplary action in performing sacrifices was only to give a lesson to the common man to show how one should abide by the injunctions of the Vedas. O Mokyana Timidan Tasya Kananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitan Namano Bistam Stapitam Jaina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Koda Maiham Tadhati Shapadantikam Mande Hang Shri Guru Shri Jata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrajatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sajivam Shadvaitam Shavadhutam Parijana Sehitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamstra Hey Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Prashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hodi Priye Vansha Kopatarubhyascha Kripa Sindho Bhyevacha Paditanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adraita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Tampunar Naimisham Praptam Rishiyo Yajayan Muda Kratvangam Kratubhi Saravayar Nivritakila Vigraham Punar Naimisham Praptam Lord Balaram had uh, gone to Naimisharanya before and having killed uh, Romaharshana Sutta he was asked to go on pilgrimage, which he did. Having completed his pilgrimage, he wound up at Kurukshetra, as we've just heard, then returned to Dwarka. And Punar, now again, he's come to Naimisharanya to perform sacrifices. Tam Punar Naimisham Praptam 
Rishiyo Yajian Muda. And the sages engaged him in sacrifice. Uh, this is the business of the Brahmins. Hmm. Yajan Yajan Patan Patan Dana Patig Pratigraha. Uh, to perform sacrifice and to engage others in performing sacrifice. To become learned and to make others learned. And to accept charity, uh, dana, and distribute uh, charity. Uh, these are the six engagements of the Brahmins. Uh, so when a pilgrim comes, they'll engage him in sacrifice. And so they engaged Lord Balaram also in sacrifice. But Lord Balaram, of course, is sacrifice personified, Yajna Vai Vishnu. And he's the enjoyer of all sacrifices. Bhoktaram Yajna Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suridam Sarvabhutanam Gatvamam Shantam Richtati. There was no need of his performing, sacri offering sacrifices because he's the person to whom sacrifice is meant to be offered. But still, he set the example. Yad yadachariti shreshtas tattadeve taro jana sayat pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartate. Whatever a great person does, the ordinary people follow. Name partas, partasti kartavyam trishu lokeshu kinchana nan avaptam avaptavyam then varte vichakarmani Krishna says there's no duty for me prescribed anywhere in the three worlds I have nothing to gain but still I very carefully perform prescribed duties uh, to set the example for others. Uh, even kings like Janak Maharaj, who also had no reason, uh, because they were transcendental to the Shrotavyasya um, Shrutasyaja, they're beyond the Vedic injunctions, but still they set the example. So, uh, hmm, Krishna urges Arjun, you also should fight. Uh, just to set the example of the duty of a kshatriya. So Lord Balaram himself, although not in need of performing sacrifices, mm, performed them. Nayam lokostri agyasya kutonya kuru sattama. Without performing sacrifice, one can't be happy in this life or in the next. Uh, the what is that? Yajyarta, yajyarta karmanon yatra loko yam karma bandana. One must perform all activities for the sake of sacrifice. Otherwise, one will be entangled by the reactions for what one does. Yajyarta, everything should be done for sacrifice or for the sake of Vishnu. Arta means. Uh, for the purpose of, for the sake of, uh, yajna, sacrifice or Vishnu. Yajyartat karmanon anyatra loko yam karma bandha. Therefore the whole world is entangled because they don't perform sacrifice. Uh, they do everything for their own sense gratification. And therefore they're not happy in this life and in the next life bad news. Nayam lokostriya gyasya kutonya kuru sattama. So Lord Balaram uh, was willing, willingly agreed to be engaged. The sages were very pleased to engage him in uh, sacrifice. Uh, although kratu angam kratu bhi Kratu uh, Angam, all the sacrifices are just limbs of the Lord. 
for the Lord himself is the embodiment of all sacrifices. But still he performed sacrifice. That's described also that when Krishna was in Dwarka, every day he was performing sacrifice, he was giving charity, he was performing all prescribed duties. Although he himself is the target, the beneficiary of all such activity. He was even doing meditation uh, and meditating on himself because there's nobody else to meditate on. So he was meditating on himself. Uh, yes, meditation is one of the daily duties. Uh, to give charity, to do some meditations, do all of these things. Uh, so Lord Balaram was setting the example. So by Nivritta, Nivritta Akila Vigraham. He'd given up fighting, uh, retired from warfare, uh, and now he's doing sacrifice. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, this chapter is quite unique for me in a sense that mm -hmm. unique mm -hmm. for me because here uh, Balramji represents Guru Tattva and uh, <clears throat> Duryodhana is uh, identified as a skilled person. I see. Skilled. Skilled person. Yeah. So, and uh, <clears throat> He could satisfy Balramji, or could he could satisfy Balramji, du Duryodhana, <coughs> yeah, Balramji. So uh, who could, who could sac satisfy who? Duryodhana. Oh, okay. Could satisfy Balramji as a guru tattva. So what principles governs that when we say yasya prasadat bhagavat prasado? Because in this case, Krishna was not happy with Duryodhana. But Balramji was happy as a Guru Tattva. So, Balaram was his Guru, not Krishna. So, of course, the context here is, let's see. Yes, he accepted the Guru. And by the grace of the Guru, he became expert. Uh, this Duryodhana was the best uh, club fighter by the grace of Balara. Uh, Yasya Prasada, uh, the guru was pleased with him. Uh, what is that? Yes, he was pleased with him. So he taught him very nicely all the secrets of club fighting. But that's as far as it went. He was his guru for, for fighting, not for spiritual realization. Hmm? Duryodhana never asked, uh, who am I? <laughs> Why are the threefold miseries always giving me pain? Uh, am I at this body or am I something else? Uh, no. Simply, how can I fight? Uh, effectively with the club so for that and that's what he got he wanted he could have approached Balaram for higher purposes but his purpose was how to be able to fight hmm? so he got that that blessing from Lord Balaram yes you can fight hmm? but not more not more Anything you want to learn, uh, one is, you're advised, approach an expert. If you want to learn violin, if you want to learn madanga, if you want to learn business, if you want to learn anything, then approach a person in knowledge, surgery. So Duryodhana did that, but he didn't approach for the highest purpose. Tadvigyanartam sa guru meva bigach 
Now that should be the real purpose. Vigyan artam. Of course he got Vigyan, he became realized in fighting with the club. But he didn't become realized, what is that? In Shreya Uttama, Tasmad Gurum Prapadyeta Jigyasu Shreya Uttama. He didn't ask about Shreya Uttama, he just asked about how to be a good fighter. Uh, there, and therefore he didn't know what Shreya Uttama was. He thought, let me uh, kidnap Krishna, let me do so many things, mischief. Uh, he didn't know what his ultimate benefit was, his misfortune. Uh, anyone who approaches a guru simply for material benefit, he may get that material benefit, but he doesn't get the ultimate benefit. Prabhupada talked about that. Some people joined Gaudiya Math and their goal was how to get the property. They got the property, but they didn't get more. So one has to approach the guru for the real business of life, not for just technique. A lot of people now in the West, they're interested in approaching a guru to learn some technique, you know, some, some meditation, some exercise, some this, that. They want to learn a technique, but they don't want to surrender their lives. And they don't want to attain the highest realization. They want a technique only. So they get a technique, not more. Is that okay? Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, in the, the pastime of Jay Vijay coming down to this earth mm -hmm. three times, so all the other two times, like Ravana, Kumkarna, Hiranyakashi, Hiranyaksha, at their present context time, they were like prominent demons. But in Krishnila, Shishupal Dantvakra seems like not very much, like Duryodhana was there, Kamsa was there, Jarasan was there. So is there any, I mean, I was just, they are not like very prominent demons, even in Bhagavatam, small sections comes for their description. Because there was a big convergence of demons when Krishna came. Otherwise they would have been big demons, but there were so many other big demons that we look and say, oh, they were small demons. They were big demons, but there were so many others who took the opportunity to appear to take part in Krishna's pastimes. Hare Krishna. <coughs> so, uh, so we see sometimes Lord Balaram, mm -hmm. Lord Balaram, sometimes he seems to contradict Krishna. Lots of times. Yes. <laughs> so, so, uh, okay, so can you explain what are the reasons, just so, taking example of he wants to marry Subhadra to Duryodhana, but uh, she wants to marry Arjuna herself and Krishna also. So, so how do we understand this uh, contradiction? Everyone's an individual. Even the personality of Godhead. He's not only an individual, he's many individuals. Although he's one individual, he takes the form of many individuals and he, each of them acts individually. That's the opulence of Krishna. There are different kinds of expansions. The yogis expand, but their expansions are all the same. But Krishna expands and each expansion is separately constituted. So Krishna appears as uh, Krishna, he appears as Balaram, and they're, they have different personalities. One is the older brother, one is the younger brother. One has this opinion, the other has that opinion. Mm -hmm. And that creates enjoyment also. It's boring if your brother always says, yes, 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 good, good, whatever you think, yes, yes. Now, are you out of your mind? What are you doing? <laughs> And then it's, there's some enjoyment.
This is the personality of Godhead. He can disagree with himself and enjoy it. Isn't that okay? And we can also enjoy how Krishna is taking two different forms and disagreeing with himself. The devotees can appreciate. The non-devotees may not appreciate, but devotees appreciate. Krishna has taken two different forms and he's at odds with himself even. Disagreeing with himself, taking two different sides of the same issue. Krishna takes one side, Balaram takes the other side. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. You just mentioned that how a yogi can expand, just like we hear from Bhagatam also. So, uh, w w can you a little bit more elaborate what is the difference between the two kind of expansions, Krishna expanding in Dwarka into the same self? The yogis <laughs> can only do one thing. Prabhupada said they're like television expansions. So, if you see like Amitabh Bachchan on the television, if you see him on one television, you know, raising his rifle. Then all the other televisions, he's raising the same rifle and pointing the same way. That's television expansion. So the yogis are like that. What, if he raises his hand in benediction, all nine forms raise their hand in benediction. That's what he can do. Uh, therefore, when Nard Muni went to Dwarka, he was astonished that he went to one palace, Krishna is there. He went to another palace, same Krishna is there. He went to a third palace. So he knew the trick too because he's a yogi. But he can imagine nine palaces, but 10, 20, 30, 40. And in each palace, Krishna was doing something different. In one palace, he's welcoming a daughter in law. In another palace, he's giving a daughter away. In one palace he's playing chess, in another palace he's consulting his advisors, in another palace he's doing something else. Each palace, d different, different, different. And Nard Muni was astonished. How is Krishna doing that? Well, that's one of the opulences of Krishna, that he can appear in different forms, uh, doing different things. He also appears sometimes in exactly the same form, and sometimes in a different, slightly different. In the rasa dance, all the Krishnas were the same. When he married all the queens, each Krishna was the same. <coughs> but when he appears as Balaram, a little different. Different color, different nature. That's another opulence of, of Krishna. There are different technical names for that. What is that? Hmm? Vaibhav Prakash, Vaibhav Vilas, like that. Different technical names for these different kinds of expansions. Is that okay? What is the word Deva? The word Deva usually refers to the demigods. But uh, someone asked me this question that why do we address uh, Lord Narasimha Deva as, you know, as Deva? Though Deva, Deva, Deva Jagat Pate. He's Deva number one. <laughs> Govinda Deva. What is that? Sri Sri Radha Sri La Govinda Deva. The Govinda, he's the original Deva. Krishna's, Deva means God. So the original God is Krishna. He's the original Deva. And the assistants of God are also Devas, godly. Uh, they can also be called gods, but they're small gods. And Krishna is the big god. So the big god is called Deva Deva. Deva Deva Jagatpate, the Deva of all the other Devas. Hmm? Just like officer, the commanding officer. 
So in a platoon, there may be a commanding officer. But at the head of the whole army, there's the commander-in-chief. So he's a commanding officer and they're commanding officers, but he's the chief commanding officer. Hmm? So the, there's so many devas, but Krishna is the deva of all the devas. The worshipable deity of the worshipable deities. People are worshipping Indra, this one, that one, Shiva, but they're all worshipping Krishna. Just like the gods are also called Ishra. Hmm? There's so many Ishras. But Ishra Parama Krishna. He's the Parameshra. Is that okay? Hmm. Anything else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. <coughs> Maharaj, I was in uh, Pandarpur recently and uh, devotees asked me a question, why is uh, Krishna there called as Pandurang? Why is Krishna called Panduranga? Because Pandu, pa Pandra in Marathi means uh, yeah. white. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I could speculate how it's derived, but I wouldn't want to do that. You have to ask the Pujaris or something. At, uh, Pandarpur. Does it refer to Balaram or? I don't know. A another question. You have to ask Lokanath Marsh. <laughs> He'd be the authority. Maharaj, uh, regarding uh, uh, worship of Lord Chaitanya, you see that uh, he's, uh, we know that he is Krishna and but his bodily color is so different, his attire, his avatar is so different, he's like a sannyasi. But still we call him Krishna. And uh, Lord Nishingadeva also. Krishna is playing a flute and dancing with the gopis and Lord Nishingadeva is has sharp nails and he's tearing apart Hiranyakashipu. We're very different. But he's Krishna. So, uh, by uh, if a devotee leaves his body chanting Gauranga, hmm? when a devotee leaves his body chanting Gauranga, then he goes to uh, Golok, and or he goes to Navadweep in Golok. That is not very clear exactly. That in Golok there is Navadweep. He goes. <laughs> I don't know how funny that is. Really, that fun? I don't know. He goes. What is that? Sri Goda Mandala Bhumi Yebajane Chintamini Tarahoi Raja Bhumi Vash. There's no difference between Goloka Vrindavan and Gordham. So the it's described as the same devotees, the same. Krishna is performing pastimes in both places and devotees may also accompany him performing pastimes in different moods. Well, these things will all be revealed in due time. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
had a question about the third offense to the holy name. It says to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. So whenever a guru gives some suggestion, it's mostly like advice. So what is the difference between disobeying and guru just suggesting and the disciple not following? Guru Arabhagya to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. There may be some advice, if you like you can do this, but then there are orders, you must do this. No intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating, no illicit sex, 16 rounds, so many orders, you must do this. And then there's some advice, if you like you can do this, if you like you can do that. Especially the orders given by the spiritual master should not be neglected. For that matter, the advice should be taken very seriously also. But if it's optional advice, if you like you can do this, then if you like you can do it. Or if you like you can do something else. That's the meaning of if you like. Is that okay? Hmm? What did you have in mind? Hare Krishna. How, do, how, do how does one know what is an advice and uh, what is an order? Because if you, order don't, if you don't know, then take it as an order. Anything else? Okay, shall we stop here? Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna.